welcome back. I'm Laura Flanders. You know me from the Laura Flanders Show. You can watch that anytime you want and see the whole archive of interviews that I've done over the years at lauraflanders.com. And I'm very happy to be working this weekend with my friends at the New Economy Coalition here at Common Bound 2016. It's been an extraordinary weekend of sharing and learning and cooperating here in Buffalo, New York. And one of the subjects that has been front and center of people's attention while we're here is what's going on right here in Buffalo. It's an amazing city, Rust, Rust Belt with all the problems that go with being a Rust Belt, deindustrialized town for sure, but a powerful resistance that's modeling some of the most creative and intersectional change making that I'm seeing anywhere in the country. So I'm very excited to have France, 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 Shell, let me get this right. I'm very excited to have Franchelle Hart with me. Franchelle works with Open Buffalo, um, and well, you're gonna tell us more about what you do, but first introduce yourself a little bit, Franchelle. I kind of garbled your name already, but <laughs> I am not garbled in my respect for your work. Thank you. So, um, one, Buffalo is extremely excited to, to host Common Bound. I, I think that this is it's exactly the moment that Buffalo needs in order to really bring innovation and progressive thought at a, at a time when Buffalo is really at a crossroads and how, how we continue development, how we continue the concept of shared prosperity. Um, across all the city. So um, having national experts come in and really help to facilitate those conversations and also model that in other communities, it's been done. Um, and we're not trying to re recreate the wheel here. Now you're so, born and bred in Buffalo? Narrow Falls. Um, I've, I'm an alum of Buffalo State, so it's good that Buffalo State's hosting us today. So uh, thank them for that. And um, yeah, I've been in Buffalo and bounced around a little bit after college and decided that I really wanted to be a part of what was what was happening in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. and so if people came to your neighborhood where you grew up or where you grew up now, uh, what would they see? Um, it's, it's not there anymore. So I um, I grew up in uh, Center Court. Center Court is a uh, part of the Niagara Falls uh, Municipal Housing Authority. Um, they they did do um, redevelopment in that in that area um, to provide for home ownership for low income uh, residents in the city of Niagara Falls. So that that housing project that I actually grew up in is no longer there. Um, the high school that I graduated from is no longer there. Um, they expanded the outlet mall in that area too. So I think that it's um, it's a symbol for what's going on here in Western New York. These um, monuments that most people go back to 50 years when they return back home um, are no longer there mm -hmm. for us. And so we have to ask ourselves these questions in Buffalo too. You know, what what do we really want to protect in our community? And what do we want to actually develop and improve? So what is Open Buffalo about and how did it get started? Yeah, so um, I'm so excited about Open Buffalo. So we're um, we're about a two-year-old organization. We were initially founded um, from four community-based organizations, Partnership for the Public Good, Push Buffalo, Coalition for Economic Justice, and Voice Buffalo. And uh, we answered the call from Open Society Foundation. The initial call went out to 16 cities to really figure out a model for community collaboration to address long-term systemic issues that communities were facing. And ultimately, Buffalo was one of three um, areas that were ultimately funded and alongside with the county of San Diego and the island of Puerto Rico. Um, each community facing such monumentous um, task on on their own, and what we're what we're tasked to do is very difficult work. Bringing together players and cultures and mission statements all to work on long term issues is a is a huge task. But so, who are the players that you're bringing together that maybe some people might think how do they ever work together? <laughs> yeah, uh, you've got energy workers, mm -hmm. you've got union folks, you've got environmentalists, you've got uh, African-American minority populations in the city dwellers. Um, describe it a little bit. Well, um, as, as, a, as you know, and I'm, I'm sure most of the listeners know, Buffalo still is one of the most segregated cities in all of the U.S. 
um, we have the Main Street divide where literally over 80% of African Americans live on the east side of, um, of Buffalo and uh, the level of concentrated poverty that we have in, um, in, within the racial segregation as well. Um, so that's just a, a visual symbol for how our not-for-profits and how our churches and how our labor unions work together as well. And traditionally, we, we address immediate needs. And I think that that's, um, that's not unique to Buffalo, but um, across the country, we, um, communities are hurting. So we want to address those, how do we fix it right now? Mm -hmm. And I think that we've, for so long, we've lacked the capacity to really tackle, well, let's not just fix how you get a job today, but how come these jobs aren't coming to certain neighborhoods and really work on long-term workforce development and sustainable, good-paying jobs? Um, so it's, it's a huge task in bringing all of these very diverse um, thinkers and strategies and missions, um, missions of organizations to the, to the table in addition um, to the established organizations coming into the process, but how do we find new leadership to come into the process? We have a, um, last year was actually the first year that Buffalo has seen um, a spike in population over decades. And it's uh, partially to contribute to our immigrant refugee brothers and sisters that are coming over to um, to Buffalo, and we we welcome them, and we're we're trying to figure out how do, how do we tackle tackle language access, and how do we make sure that we just don't have organizations speaking on behalf of our immigrant refugee brothers and sisters, but that we empower them to come to the table and make those decisions for themselves. So that's a piece of what Open Buffalo is tasked with doing. So that's the task. What's the practice? We said, in just, we used the word intersectional mm -hmm. at the top. Mm -hmm. What does it mean on a very concrete level, nuts and bolts, to have an intersectional meeting, say? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> For, for example, our, um, our climate justice work. Um, traditionally, our, our climate justice and environmental movement has, um, has been um, very, uh, very white, very well educated, and male dominated. Um, I've noticed so. that. <laughs> <laughs> and again, not, not just in Buffalo. Sure. And, and so, how, how do we bring Black Lives Matter activists into this space and into this conversation. How do we? Um, we just put everyone in the room. How do you do that? Um, you can tell. I want you to say, like, where do you put up the flyers? How, yeah. What language do you use? How do you hold the meeting? How is it an empowering experience, not an alienating experience? Mm. And is the meeting about the environment on day one, or is it about something else? Our Open Buffalo Emerging Leaders Program we, we, put, we try to find um, leaders from all walks, um, all parts of the city, despite the Main Street divide, and put them in a room. We do an opening weekend, and the opening weekend is 48 hours straight of just grueling community organizing and really figuring out what's your self-interest in this and making sure that everyone's self-interest, and it's that we want Buffalo to prosper. So is there fun food and music as well? There's, we have an art integration <laughs> program, we have African drumming, we have poetry, um, anything that can capture the imagination and the creativity of, of our community. We have a wonderful and um, very blossoming art integration uh, community here in Buffalo. So utilizing that to break down boundaries and really establish uh, cross-cultural communication. And, and while you're there, maybe you thought that you came in to talk about gentrification, but you're also understanding the tie between gentrification and racial equality and economic equality. And oh my goodness, maybe I want to run for office one day. So it really helps to um, shift the narrative on why folks come into this work and really creating this space that if we continuously tackle gentrification one campaign at a time, or racial equity or economic inequality, we're never going to get anywhere. We have to form one movement that really creates a better Buffalo, a better New York, a better U.S. And that's what we're trying to build here, here in Buffalo. And how would you rate your success so far? Seven. Seven out of ten? Seven. That is not bad. 
How many of these 48 hour events have you had so far? So we're about to launch the, the second inaugural class. So it's a three month intensive leadership development program and we have other phases. So we look at really how we build out a leadership development pipeline and not just one off uh, leadership development um, pieces. So that's that's what we're doing. We're recruiting for our second um, second class that will launch in late August. And you have actions coming up right this month of July. I think. Yeah. Um, speaking of kind of the intersectionality piece, um, uh, just what's going on in our country right now, um, the, the police brutality and um, issues or lack thereof of justice and especially in communities of color, we have a Justice and Opportunity Week that's coming up the week of July 18th. And we've, we've collected over 2,000 um, community surveys to really gauge the trust of residents and law enforcement here in our community. Um, thank goodness we haven't had a Baton Rouge or a Ferguson here in Buffalo, but we have a lot of issues going on here. So how, how do we address that? And the biggest call that we've heard from the, the community isn't just police harassment, but it's the intersectionality on concentrated poverty, lack of jobs, and police harassment. So we're, we're doing a discussion. We're bringing uh, Dr. Um, D'Artanian Scorza from California here to really talk about that intersectionality between communities of color, high quality jobs, and issues with law enforcement. So. Um, we're, we're super excited about that. All right, Franchelle, you can see why I was excited. Franchelle Hart, you can get more information um, at the Common Bound website, I think. Uh, and we will continue with this live stream in just a bit. Thanks for coming on from Thank Open you. Buffalo.